Good afternoon. It's been a long 10 months. Thank you for being with me again today as I do my 30th COVID-19 briefing. I'm going to a different format and we're gonna do the in-person with me briefings monthly. And you'll continue to be able to get new information on channel 10 and YouTube. You also can visit our COVID-19 information page or go to the Skagit County Public Health Department website for the most up-to-date information. We, we update our website as often as we get new information, so please stay connected. Also, every Monday night, I report the latest information to the council, so if you wanna turn the council meeting on for the first five minutes, you can catch the latest on the COVID and the vaccines. So the latest numbers from Island Hospital, we've, they've tested over 10,622 people to date. We've had a total of 217 positive cases from that testing, and they've admitted 35 people to Island Hospital. According to Skagit County, in the 98221 zip code, there are currently 315 positive cases of COVID. In Skagit County, as of January 11th, we've had 3,399 positive cases, 43 deaths, and 209 people hospitalized. Compared to a month ago, we had 2,462 positive cases and 31 deaths and 162 people hospitalized. That's an increase of 937 cases in the last month and an increase of 47 hospitalization and 12 additional tragic deaths in the last month. Well, the county is now on to our vaccination efforts and prioritization and vaccine doses are distributed by the state. Skagit County is focused on our first recipients of the vaccine in phase one for high risk workers in the healthcare setting, high risk first responders, and residents and staff of nursing homes and assisted living facilities and other community-based congregate living settings where most individuals are over the age of 65 and are receiving care and supervision or assistance. And if you are in that phase and you have not been able to access a vaccine or you have a friend that hasn't been able to get a vaccine yet please call the Skagit County Health Department at 1-360-416-1500 360-416-1500 and they will direct you to the next place where you can obtain a vaccine phase b will start in February. And phase 1B is for all people over the age of 70 and people 50 and older who live in multi-generational families or households. Phase 1B, which is after that, is high-risk critical workers over 50 who work in a congregate setting. And phase 1B3 are people 16 years or older with two or more comorbidities or underlying conditions. Phase 1B4 is high-risk critical workers in congregate settings under the age of 50 and people, staff, and volunteers of all ages in any living congregate living setting. The governor's office has announced a new Healthy Washington, a roadmap to recovery for COVID-19. Every region begins in phase one. Each reason, region's phase will be determined by the Department of Health in response to four metric requirements. The metrics for each re region will be updated every Friday on the state's COVID-19 risk assessment dashboard. Skagit County will be in the re region, or is in the region, classified as the North Region, along with Island, San Juan, and Whatcom County. And we are currently in phase one. Phase one, for the most part, aligns with the restrictions that have currently been in place with just a few key exceptions. Indoor fitness and outdoor entertainment are now permitted with restrictions. Appointment-based fitness and training, where there is no more than one customer per room 
or 500 square feet for large facilities. Outdoor entertainment establishes, establishments include zoos, outdoor theaters, concert venues, and rodeos, among other outdoor venues, is allowed. Operations must be ticketed and only with groups of 10 or more as a maximum with a limit of two households in a group. Indoor gatherings and indoor dining remains prohibited. Outdoor dining with a maximum of six people and a limit of two households per table is permitted with an 11 p.m. closure for those eating establishments. Retail, worship services, personal services, professional services where remote work isn't available is limited to 25% capacity. To go forward from phase one to phase two, regions, so in our case, all four counties, have to meet four metrics. And the metrics are an over 10% decreasing trend in two weeks of the rate of COVID cases per 100,000 population. We have had a 31% decreasing trend. So we've got that one. Number two, an over 10% decreasing trend in two weeks rate of new COVID-19 hospital admissions rates of 100,000 population, but we have a 50% increasing trend. So we're going the wrong direction. And number three is ICU occupancy in hospitals needs to be less than 90%, and we're currently at 49%. So we have that. And COVID-19 test positivity rates need to be less than 10%, and we're currently at 4%. So our region is meeting three of the four metrics as of January 11th, 2021. Regions that fail to meet two or more of the above metrics are moved back to phase one. So if we got to phase two and we were only able, only able to maintain maybe two of the four metrics, we'd have to come back to phase one. Department of Health will move into a new phase forward or backwards every Monday. To remain in phase two, regions must meet at least three metrics. Decreasing or a flat trend in two week rate of COVID-19 cases per 100,000. Decreasing or a flat trend in two weeks rate of new COVID-19 hospital admissions. ICU occupancy, of course, less than 90% and COVID test positivity rate less than 10%. In phase two, masks and physical distancing are still required statewide for all activities. Indoor social gatherings with people outside the household are permitted with a maximum of five people from outside the household and a limit of two households. Outdoor social gathering maximum in this phase is increased to 15 individuals from two households. Indoor dining will be permitted with a maximum of 25% capacity and 11 p.m. closure of eating establishments. All other indoor activities must also follow the 25% capacity limit. This includes retail, entertainment, groceries, as well as personal, professional, and indoor fitness. In phase two, moderate risk indoor sports and all sports outdoors gains flexibility to have league games and competitions. Outdoor entertaining may host groups of up to 15 with two household limit and an overall 15 person maximum. Weddings and funeral ceremonies and indoor receptions may take place following the appropriate venue requirements. So now I wanna talk a little bit about the other things that are happening in our city related to COVID. We have our CBDG small business stabilization grants that are now going to be available and the city has received an additional funding to provide emergency relief for small businesses in jeopardy as a result of COVID-19. These monies are coming and they're funded through HUD, Community Development Blant, Block Grant Program. Eligibility for these awards will be based on full-time equivalent job retention of 
of the employees whose income are 80% or less of the area medium income, an employee earns no more than $43,900 annually. Businesses that have been open since 2020 and employ a maximum of 30 employees are encouraged to apply for this funding. The deadline to apply is January 29, 2021. If you have questions, please contact Don Miesemer at 360-299-1942 or Joanne Stewart at 360-293-1907. Now at the library, the library's been busier than ever, with a record number of curbside checkouts in the first two weeks of January. You can now return your items anytime during curbside hours at the back of the library's drive through on 9th Street, six days a week. Hours for parking, lot curbside delivery, and contact-free returns in the book drops are Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Tuesdays until 6 p.m. The library has daily weekday story times, special videos for all ages. Wednesday night programs will resume in February. Well, my next COVID briefing in person will be on February 10th, 2021. All briefings, like I said before, will be available on Channel 10 at 4 p.m. via the city's YouTube channel. Please visit the COVID-19 information page on the city's website and on the Skagit County's public health page for information. As always, I wanna thank you for doing your part in protecting each other during this global pandemic. None of us could have anticipated what the last year has brought into our lives. I'm an optimist and as difficult and often tragic COVID-19 has been. I know we've learned about ourselves. We have learned to be creative and kind, and we've just plain survived. We'll come out of this stronger and wiser and with different priorities. I look forward to what is to come. Take care. I'll see you in a few weeks. Come and visit me on Monday night at council meetings and stay connected to our webpage and channel 10. Thank you.